YouTube, emotions have again come to me in the form of a book. Marcus Zusak's The Book Thief. Emotions. A lot of them. Sent on a train to be a foster child, Liesl Memminger finds her way to Munich in Nazi Germany and can't read. That's what this book is about. She can't read and yet becomes the book thief, stealing books in her time there as a foster child living amongst people she doesn't know in a town she's never heard of without her mother or her brother or any semblance of family. And this is the story of how she grows up and learns to read and becomes the person that she eventually is. I can't actually talk about the plot without first addressing the writing style. This book is narrated by death. Death as a character really breaks down a lot of stereotypes that humanity has ensued into literature and life about death as an entity that sort of comes for you when it's time for you to die. And he narrates Liesl's story as she grows up over the course of a few years. And his perspective is super important because he's at the same time collecting all the souls that are dying around the globe from the Second World War. And he only eventually comes back to find her diary, and that's how he tells the entire story. The writing is just supremely elegant. The syntax is beautiful. You get a perspective that you couldn't get from ordinary third-person narration. And while some of the German that, for those of us that don't speak German, was not really explained well enough, you sort of understood what was going on anyway. And you just learn about these characters without having to really get to know them because death describes them so beautifully. The structure, the imagery, the metaphor, and the bluntness of the narration of this book are all incredible. Like I said, the syntax is great. The varied sentence lengths just make this what it is. And it just adds a level of commentary that you... I can't explain it! You have to read it! You really just have to read it! Most of the World War II novels that I have read many of them have had a Jewish protagonist. This book is different in that the protagonist is not Jewish and also not fighting for the side of the Nazis. And it's a refreshing change, mostly, I find from all of those books in which you're just, they're just very, very depressing, albeit it was a depressing time. But the characters in this book are described in a way that makes you feel as though you've met them. You know them, you and you want to believe in them. Liesl, the 10-year-old girl, who's the protagonist of the story, befriends this boy named Rudy, who lives on her same street, and I believed in them as best friends. I wanted Rudy to be my best friend. I wanted to be Liesl, almost, just so I could have the chance to meet him. I wanted the two of them to be together. Max, who becomes her friend later on in the story, I wanted them to be the best of friends. They were the solace in each other's lives and oh, their relationship was so beautiful. I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. And Papa, the man who becomes her foster father, he's probably the greatest person she ever knew. And he was such an instrumental piece of Liesl's life that I, I couldn't help but feel the most connected to him. He was a very difficult character to understand sometimes. He seemed like a pretty simple kind of guy, but I think there was a little bit going on underneath that veneer, and I, I found him to be a little complex underneath the simplicity that he was painted as. But, oh, Papa and Liesl, I believed in the two of them as, as father and daughter. Oh, they were so beautiful! They were such beautiful people to read about. And because the characters are so believable, I feel that that coupled with the fact that this has got a lot of real life historical events meshed into it, although it is fiction, oh, everything feels so real. You, this, this book could have happened. This book completely could have happened in Nazi Germany in the 40s, and it's it feels so real to me. I feel like this was actually history. Ultimately, though, this was a book about the power of words and how words have the ability to change a life, a family, and a nation. Even the, the power of influence and charisma and how reading and words and writing 
are really the foundation of change in a lot of instances. More so than guns, more so than war, and that was what struck me about this book. I read a lot of books about reading. I don't know what's up with that. And because I really connected with the power of words in this book, I just want to say right now that this tore out my heart and flung it across the street, basically. There, I was so invested in all of these people and all of their stories and how things have so much power to change that the sad things were twice as sad and the humorous things were twice as humorous and every emotion was just at such an extreme. Oh, there's a flippant use of name calling at such a young age, which I didn't understand and thought was really great. There were so many characters that I felt so many things for. Oh, I just want to say again, Rudy Steiner, her best friend, Liesl's best friend, was the most stupid but the most valiant of all of the characters in that book. And oh, he was such that kind of tool guy that you still wanted to be friends with. Rosa, Rosa, her foster mother, was completely portrayed as one-sided and I I wish we had seen more sweetness from her because I think she could have been a really great person if she hadn't been calling people names the whole time. The only thing I was really a little uncomfortable with in this book was that Death says to you right in the very beginning that he doesn't like mystery building. He doesn't like building up to a great question of what's going to happen next and he consistently gives you previews of what's to come throughout the story and I found it to be a little bit spoilery almost. It got my emotions going way before it was necessary and I just I knew it was coming and it just made everything so much worse. Everything was so much more intense. Ah uh, ah uh, I sort of I wish it I wish it hadn't been there and I could have discovered things the usual way I guess. Usual. But overall five out of five beautiful stars on Marcus Zusak's The Book Thief. Probably one of my new favorite YA books. So good. If you haven't read it, please read it. Please read it. Be prepared for a lot of sadness, but please go read it. So brilliant. So brilliant. Thanks for watching. Stuff is below. Bye!